Hi, and welcome to the Weekly Bowl. I'm Michael Sheets. And I'm Lydia Moynihan. Here's this week's city news. Uber is the new yellow. New Yorkers have likely started to abandon their habitual yellow taxi cab ways in favor of the ride-hailing service Uber. And as of Friday, Uber has dropped its fares by a generous 15%. So how does this play out for the workers? Well, the idea is that although the drivers will be making less, the decrease in fares will boost demand, therefore shortening idle time between trips. Started from the bottom, now we're way up here. Billionaire Jeff Green has filed a proposal to build an 18-story building atop another six-story structure in Flatiron. Known as the piggyback development technique, Green is not alone in his enterprise. Such projects allow small buildings to generate more income. And, since there is no need to first lay a foundation, above-ground construction conserves both time and money. We should be expecting quite a few new properties to come into view, literally, these next couple of years. Who said the Friday's outdated? Let's take a look at how it's welcoming you back. The Dead Rabbit Grocery & Grog, a posh Irish bar that boasts recognition by Tales of the Cocktail Spirited Awards. The Seaport Culture District, which showcases a shortlist of New York's top and hottest artists. Seaport Studios, which turns shops into publicly displayed art. The District, a food hall that rivals Chelsea Market with its newly designed interior. And finally, a carousel that uses light and sound to teleport you to the bottom of the sea. And much more. The Financial District has missed you New Yorkers, so make sure to stop by soon and make sure to check out Vanity Fair's article, Why the Latest Buzzing Neighborhood of NYC Isn't in Brooklyn, to learn more. Here's this week's update on TKC faculty. Check out philosophy professor Peter Kreis' latest book, why God Must Exist, in which he argues that the laws of morality exist and are dictated by God. What really makes the world go round? King's is launching a new program to help students shape and lead strategic public and private institutions of this century by developing an understanding of the interrelationship between technology, enterprise, culture, and creativity. This will be achieved by a plethora of courses, including software workshops, data analysis, and Photoshop for visual and digital communications. Additionally, this fall, Kings will offer a special business elective led by Peter Thiel, the co-founder of PayPal. Kings is proud to announce the addition of a new sixth major of English offered this coming fall. The philosophy is to place students in front of the world's greatest works of imaginative literature and let those ideas speak for themselves. Besides studying literature and its influence on Western civilization, students will have the opportunity to explore their own ideas in courses such as creative writing. I sat down with the CEO of Job Creators Network, Alfredo Ortiz, to learn more about his organization, his background, and what advice he has for students. Here's the interview. Job Creators Network has been around for about three years. Um, it was started by uh, Bernie Marcus, who is the co-founder of the Home Depot. And uh, Bernie's story is an amazing story, right? He is really one of those great entrepreneurial American dream type yeah. stories. He was fired actually at 48 uh, and started at Home Depot with one store in Atlanta at 52. And now it is an amazing success. Uh, hires, I think it employs nearly 400,000 people um, and really has just been one of those examples of really of great entrepreneurialism in this country. Um, so JC is engaged in promoting entrepreneurship and this generation especially seems very, very into that. What advice right. would you have for aspiring entrepreneurs? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, um, again, passionate about what you're doing. Right? I love what you're doing. Um, believe in what you're doing. You are going to have to take certain risks and not everything's going to succeed and when you look at the success and failure rate of new businesses only 10 percent of those ideas actually succeed so already off the bat you're probably gonna have a 90 percent failure rate working against you you got to understand that and learn that kind of have the what i call the personality to be able to absorb those kinds of risks so it's it's a stressful situation but you just got to believe in what you're doing that it's a great idea you know, have right backers, have the right people advising you. Um, a lot of people will um, sometimes say you can't do things, right? And you just have to believe that you can. But they should be well thought out as well um, and understand the marketplace, your customers, the, the challenges and the risks that exist. And once you've got that laid out and you feel like you've got a pretty good handle on that, go for it. Next, reporter Abina tells about the latest in King's film. This past Wednesday, 50 students gathered in the city room for the TKC premiere of King's Image Films, Happy Never After. Written and directed by Joseph Holmes, this 20-minute film tells the story of siblings Ron and Sarah, who travel to New York City to find Ron's ex fiance Mary. Staring King students Matt Contreras, Leah Rabe, and Kyle Trevanovich, this film is filled with drama, suspense, and took about a year to complete. However, this isn't the first movie under their belt. 
The school's production company has also released two movies, Lens and Kelly vs. the Philosopher, and are in post-production for their latest movie, Stars, which is set to premiere at the end of the semester. King's Image Films is also looking at submitting Happy Never After to the Tribeca Film Festival, and is excited to continue producing short films. To see all their work, be sure to check out their YouTube channel. Elizabeth gives us an update on Fulton Center. Good news, Kingsians. Fulton Center added Irving Farm Coffee Roasters and Pop Karma to its site this past November. It's a great place to study, relax, and grab a quick snack. To top it off, Shake Shack's 18th location is preparing to open on the upper level of the Fulton Center, coming later this year. Soon, we don't have to walk all the way to Battery Park to enjoy that delicious burger and fries. I think it's safe to say that Jeremiah Lamphere's prayer revival is still affecting the lives of New York City today. Finally, Isabel updates us on where to stay downtown. Good afternoon, this is Isabel, and I'm standing steps away from campus at 99 Washington, the tallest Holiday Inn in the world. This hotel opened in 2014, and its 492 rooms are among the 6,300 that have been added to Lower Manhattan since 2010. This so-called hotel boom has turned the financial district into a hotspot for tourists and visitors in recent years, and it is just beginning. This year in 2016, luxury hotels will be opening on Pine Street, William Street, and John Street, adding more than 350 rooms and suites to the neighborhood. Parents, looking for a place to stay when you come to visit? Don't look too far. There are plenty of hotel rooms available that are within walking distance of the school. Thank you to writer Anastasia for this week's headlines, Alex for filmography, Ivan for production, Hannah for editing, and thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend, and make sure to tune in next time.